So today we're gonna to try to put this piece, which is a Dorman CM39102 clutch master cylinder in the Datsun over here, because no matter how much I try to bleed this thing, I cannot get any clutch pedal in there. You can see it's not leaking anywhere because this thing is still full and I've bled it tons. I have tried to back bleed it. I have tried to block it like some things on the internet say you can block it and this works well on the Nissans and the Datsuns. Um, no matter what I do, I have no clutch pedal. So I don't see any leaking at the slave cylinder on the other side over there, which I've still got disconnected from when I blocked it. And yeah, so we're gonna try the clutch master cylinder, which I got on Amazon for like 30 bucks. So it's Canadian. So not hugely expensive, thankfully. And we'll see if we can get the, the clutch work in this thing because uh, that'll be the next step in getting this thing driving. I've already got the nuts loosened up on this side here. And we'll go underneath the dash and disconnect the clutch uh, from the uh, pedal. So I don't know if you can see it very well, but there is a clevet hole in there for the clevis pin to go through. You can see I've got it partly taken off already because this thing is a pain to get off. And that clevis pin, it flew across the room and I have no idea where it went. So I'll have to find another cotter pin to put in there. So, but that's, once you get that clevis pin out, you can uh, pry that off. It was a little bit of a pain to get that off of there. And we'll uh, pull that, disconnect the, the line from the other side. We'll try to drain it first and we'll, then we'll, uh, that's all there is to taking it out. As you can see, I got as much fluid out of the uh, clutch master cylinder as I could before I disconnect the line. Still probably gonna lose some. That's why I got a uh, paper towel down there. Brake fluid is, I guess, caustic, I guess they, they, they call it. I'll put the lid back on there just to seal that up and stop anything more from getting in there. But um, you don't wanna drip it on the car any more than absolutely necessary. I already, I don't always take my own advice and get too carried away and I forget to do these things ahead of time. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take a line wrench. So this is my 10 mil line wrench. Whenever possible, use a line wrench on these things. Um, a regular wrench will slip and strip the edges easily anyways. Not necessarily all the time if they're not too tight, but a line wrench just works better. You gotta slip it along around the line first like this, slide it on like that, and then give it a twist. Not exactly enough room to work. So I do one or two things, I can either take the nuts off of there and try to give me, myself a little bit of wiggle room, or I can try to take this washer fluid bottle out. Let's take a look, we'll see what we're gonna do. Be right back. So I just slid the washer fluid out, uh, just, just connects here by the slide on uh, piece into the bracket there. So I took that out so I can give me a little more room. I also took off the nuts so that she's completely loose there, other than the uh, the line that's just a standard brake line, 3 16 brake line that goes from there to the master cylinder. So we're just gonna see if I can set the camera down so you can see just a little bit anyways. Let's see if we can get this on. Crack that loose, there she goes. Camera's gonna slide all over the place here. Okay, these, these lines have been replaced before this uh, brake line or this master on the fluid line, I should say, or whatever you wanna call it been replaced before so it's not too tight it's not too corroded so i'm just gonna do that i said i've got some paper towel underneath there to catch any fluid that hope that leaks out hopefully it's not too much because i tried to drain this thing as much as i could yeah it's not bad and then we'll just take that out let's see if you can see that there we go that's out of there don't know if I can be able to show you this one-handed, but it was just another quick test I was trying to do to make sure I had the right problem solved here. So with my thumb over top of this, and if I push down the uh, plunger on this master cylinder, it should try to push air out if it's not leaking past the seals in there. But you see, I got, I got no air coming out of there. No, no vacuum, no pressure. Now if I take the new one, over here, do the same thing. Let's see if we can do it again here. And here there's pressure built up in there. So we've definitely got better seal on the new one than we did on the old one. So at least that tells me, I think I'm on the right track. So this is my contraption to do a bench bleed on the clutch master cylinder. So Basically, I took a brake line. That's a uh, 10 mil 
by one fitting on that end with a standard flare and it goes up and around inside here and you can see in there that I don't have any um, clear tubing to go in there so I can't see it so what I've done is I put this in there so that I can see the bubbles coming out once this has got full of fluid and hopefully it's short enough that I can get the all the fluid pushed through and make sure I get all the air out as much as possible before actually putting it on the car and we'll see how this works as you can see, I got some fluid in there now. It's below the where the pipe is coming in. So we're gonna push the plunger in and see what slowly. Got some bubbles coming out. Go until it stops. And suck some fluid back in so we're going to top that up again and we're going to repeat the process until we don't get any more bubbles out of there well we've got the new one in there we've got her connected we lost a little bit of fluid trying to take off the bleeding line the, from when i was doing the bench bleeding and uh, putting this one in back in so hopefully we can uh, have to re-bleed it anyways when we get down underneath the there but hopefully it's still all good and we'll uh, just got to attach those bolts down there and hook it up to the clutch pedal bleed it and should be hopefully have a clutch we'll uh, get this uh, st started and we'll uh, see how that goes i will say just a word of advice take that fork piece or clevis or whatever you want to call it off the end of the um new master cylinder and put it on the shaft coming off the side of the clutch pedal first and then connect it back to the rod going into the master cylinder because it is a pain in the butt to freaking put on when it's all assembled. So, of course, I learned this the hard way, but it's on there now. I just got to get a cotter pin to shove in there, and that'll be locked and loaded. And I'm also happy right now that I don't have seats in this car yet because it makes climbing under the dash like this much easier. So we've got the master cylinder all bolted down, cotter pin back in underneath, and washer fluid bottle put back in place. Master cylinder is topped up with fluid. We're gonna go underneath the car and try to bleed it. I've still got it uh, set up as when I was trying to do the blocked bleeding. If you wanna take a look at it, you can find lots of videos online about that. Um, so I'm gonna try it that way first and see how that goes. Hopefully you can see that. I've got the slave cylinder bled, I believe. Uh, definitely feels like there's some pressure in there, which it didn't have before. So I'm gonna go run up into the car and see if uh, it moves while I record it from down here so I can uh, confirm that it's working. So after doing a quick online research here for these uh, master cylinders, I see a lot of information out there about the push rods on the master cylinder being different lengths for the pre-74 cars. Apparently it's right for the after 74 cars, or some even say it's too long, So, but you can adjust it then. So this would be why my slave cylinder doesn't push out all the way because I've literally lost about three eighths of an inch so roughly of movement on my master cylinder. And uh, so now I gotta swap that push rod over to the new master cylinder from the old one and that'll probably fix me up there. Just more stuff that you'll learn as I go. This should have been my first clue that something was different because the old one didn't have the rubber boot on it. This boot here, which came off of the new one down here, so just goes on top of that there. It's kind of hard to see right now. But this one, when I took it out, didn't even have that. So at some point, I'm assuming this was replaced and that swap was done earlier. If I swap that push rod over to the new Clutch Master cylinder, I should be good to go. So we've got that new one, or sorry, the old one, old push rod put into the new um, Clutch Master cylinder. And this one has a lot less play in it too. Before it would, was rattling around in there. Um, There's a lot of play even in the pedal. I could feel it before it actually engaged. So this is uh, already a lot nicer. Just gotta take that nut off of there. We'll put the that uh, rubber boot, this one here, put that rubber boot back on there and put it back in the car and hopefully Everything should be good now. 
So we got a new clutch master cylinder in there. We've bled the brakes and we had to transfer over the push rod from the old clutch master cylinder to the new clutch master cylinder. And now it feels like we've got some good pedal feel on there and some good travel. So let me go push the pedal and we'll see what we see on this thing. We'll uh, grab that wrench off of there, that eight mil wrench for bleeding before I forget that's on there. So it looks like we got it all fixed up. We got the clutch again. So now we can uh, start testing out the drivetrain and one step closer to driving. Thanks again, everybody. Have a good one. See ya.